scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. All authority has been given. It says go in that light. In other words, in Christ, the Bible says that we've been made to sit with him above all thrones and dominions and power and every name that is named both in this life and in the life to come that's what the apostle was trying to explain there but he leaves a disclaimer he says but now everybody say but now are you seeing in christ all things have been perfected but now the experience of that reality he says but now we see not what is paul saying now paul you just told us now that in christ all things are finished is that not true when jesus hung on the cross he said it is finished look at this the thieves that were on the cross one was telling him ah paraphrasing now we saw you do a lot of miracles is it that you can not bring us down from the cross another person was saying when you get there so they were all thinking of a lot of things but jesus said today he was giving him a revelation that in christ there is an experience so in christ you are healed in christ you are prosperous is that true in christ you are free from every yoke and every curse and everything but then translating that experience it does not just profit you in christ gives you access but it does not make it a reality that you can handle now there is a system with which you can take that which is in christ and make it happen here and now I hope you know that a man on a wheelchair the price for his healing has been paid why is he still on the wheelchair i don't know if you understand what i'm saying every sinner in hell today from the time jesus came the price for their salvation has been paid why are they in hell as merciful as the mercy of jesus is are you getting a point now so there is a difference between realities in christ and the experience the realities in christ give us a window to the things we can claim and the possibilities that are there on account of the zoe life that we have but that does not mean because you saw it in christ automatically it will find expression here and now i don't know if you understand what i'm saying so you can read in scripture that by his stripes i am healed but here and now you do not see that perfected in your life right you've seen that we've been redeemed from every curse of the law and all the ordinances the, the handwritings and the and all the things that have spoken against us they've been nailed to the cross but you are watching right there at 25 there was a miscarriage your younger sister at 25 there was a miscarriage obviously a demonic pattern finding expression so did god lie no it's just that we have not been taught the system of making the realities in christ to become our reality is god speaking to us now so most believers just see oh in christ and then this is how they respond god forbid i have seen it in the bible i will never be sick i will never be broke and then you are getting broke you are getting sick because what you saw is not a lie but the ability to translate it here and now have many people not read 
that this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall what how many people are casting out devils how many do you know in my name they will speak with new tongues how many innocent believers do you know have struggled for years praying and fasting for the baptism of the holy spirit and seemingly it did not come how many times have you walked to a sick body with every confidence the bible says heal the sick right raise the dead cast out devils it says freely you have received freely give in christ in christ in christ how do we make that experience here and now because if we do not learn this eventually we are going to hate god because we we'll think he's a liar a deceiver I'm very concerned, let me tell you sincerely, at how distant we are from the things we talk about, the things we claim, and the experience of the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is too much talk in the body of Christ. We must humble ourselves and admit that there are certain things we do not yet understand because there is too much talk about who god is what he can do we make such bold statements about god but when it comes to bringing god in the scene bringing his power here and now we begin to find theological explanations to excuse ourselves the bible says for instance jesus christ the same when today and forever how many preachers do you know have said that how many of us men of God have said that? How many of us have been able to reproduce that reality? We must admit that there is something we are not understanding. We must admit that there is a dimension of spiritual reality we are missing. And let me tell you where we are missing it. This is it. Romans chapter 8. Let me tell you where we are missing it very seriously. And if we do not change, a lot is going to go wrong. Eight verse five. Eight verse five. In fact, let's start. Okay, verse five. Everyone read. It says, "For they that are after the flesh, do what." Do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit verse 6 for to be what stop the word carnal there is the word sensual it's not supposed to be it's not a bad word in terms of carnal doesn't mean immoral or maybe in a negative sense it just means that when you are carnal the limitation the scope of your judgment and your assessment of spiritual things is either intellectual scientific or sensual that's the limitation that's the circumference it says to be carnally minded whoever lives his life from that standpoint that your perspective about life is just how one plus one will become two it must be logical it must be scientific the Bible says any man that thinks like that is already dying. Think about that. It says for to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So a man can watch oppression in his life and say no, I went to school. What, what sort of oppression? I mean, if, if you fail, you fail. It's not any demon, anything. You see that? And then he does not know that the whole world lies in wickedness. That all that you see is not all that there is. There are many people, for instance, who look up and say there is no God. Because they are carnally minded. They, they reason from the sensual realm. Let me tell you, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, in a bit, and I teach you principles. We just finished having financial principles. But in a bit to break life down, 
into an understandable format we are gradually coming down from that height of spirituality to reduce god into a carnal mathematical formula so there is a there is a mathematics that is responsible for healing there is a mathematics that is responsible for a and b and c and then we throw the holy spirit out and gather those informations and feel on the strength of these informations i can make it yet the bible says all scripture was inspired was written right by the inspiration of who the holy ghost the very spirit of life the spirit of truth the one that was sent to make the reality of this divine life true in us we have thrown him away and we have reduced everything if you cannot explain it like mathematics i don't believe i don't understand i throw it away it's gradually destroying us even our presentation of the gospel we are seeking to make sinners as though the gospel is not supernatural we try to beat it down and make it as mathematical as possible whereas the bible tells us that as you are speaking to people the law of the spirit of life is supplanting the law of sin and death how do you explain that mathematically so there are people carrying all kinds of demonic substances and all medicine can tell you is this is this this is that you see it happens at times there are women who based on the way they are formed they don't have wombs you just happen to be one of them god is faithful and all of that and then you sit down and believe that that's how it is the bible says to be carnally minded let me tell you the truth if we do not grow i'm not against intellectualism right there's always that saying that you should not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly relevance um, that is true but if you are truly spiritually minded you cannot be irrelevant to the earth are you getting what i'm saying see i read books i, I have studied a lot of people there is no man who walks based on the truth of this scripture that will be irrelevant in this life this is the dispensation of spiritual men we have left dispensation of physical strength of giants we are we are gradually leaving the dispensation of intellectualism there are too many questions medicine cannot answer our governments are failing flawlessly because there is a principality that can sit down over a region and they try policies after policies here comes the generation of the spiritual men those who can tell the government you have done all you know to do can you finally pay attention to us those who changed the world in the bible were not just foolish people just intellectualizing everything these were men daniel daniel for instance he understood that persia there was a spiritual host of wickedness around that territory and he knew the key to sustaining a smooth flow of that government was prayer the moment he prayed the spirits of the medes and the persians were disturbed and they used individuals to pass a government policy don't pray just for 30 days can you imagine just 30 days of no prayer and we will wreck babylon and the king passed it and daniel said no i'm a spiritual man i'm not just i, I know i'm intelligent i'm a government representative but i remember the prayer of my fathers I, 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 are you getting the point i remember the temple of solomon it was solomon while dedicating the temple part of his request he said lord whoever faces this temple and prays hearken to them and he opened his window towards jerusalem he said i know i'm intellectual but i'm not so stupid i know the mystery that brought me to this palace because i came as a captive there was a mystery beyond mathematics that brought me here and then they caught him i can imagine other people saying well you claim everything is god 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 now let god save you and the lions were roaring brothers and sisters that was physical the lion is a fierce beast but there was going to be a playing of the spiritual the superiority the excellency of the spiritual as soon as he stepped in an angel came said daniel so you have not forgotten you have not forgotten where you come from 
how many of us have forgotten you see that there are so many people talk about God right now they become irritated if you talk in church it's okay but you talk about God outside to people they just say Kai, I beg Jare you are talking business you are trying to scatter everything as though God is the reason why all things will not work let me tell you if you ignore God in any aspect of your life get set for a shock because the realm of the spirit is still alive and strong how many ladies think they will marry because they are fine they get up around they don't pray they don't listen they say God forbid me I know that I know what God gave me be celebrating there until you find out that you are 45 years and as pretty as you are because there there are realities in the spirit my brothers and sisters are realities I got a testimony from I got a testimony from um, a ministration we went for in Kaduna that, that, that blessed me one of the pastors um, came over to my place yesterday and he was telling me when I went for the meeting a woman was pregnant brothers and sisters watch this at least biology tells us I'm not a doctor there are doctors here um, so how the child is supposed to be formed eventually for reasons they cannot explain the child started turning mysteriously no the child does not turn mysteriously something turned it let me tell you the oldest man in the earth is not up to 120 there are spirits that are millions of years you call satan a liar you are right you call him a deceiver you are right you call him a fool you are very wrong satan is old are you hearing that absolutely you know sometimes the way people just talk me god forbid right spirit can do this and that and that it's not all about this it's not and and while you are talking the realm of the spirit is just watching you how old do you know in bible days all of us are not even up to teenagers right now right yet the ancient spirit of god gives us a prescription about how to live and he says if you want life and peace be spiritually minded be spiritually minded do not let education do not let intellectualism money or anything take away that spiritual factor it has nothing to do with a man of god it is the key to life and peace we have thrown the holy spirit we feel he's only relevant in church right so when you go to your job and all of that people say now let's 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 be real let's be real while the, the Bible says, I am the truth. I am reality. When God began to build and train me, God made it a necessity. And he let me know that forever in my earth work, the Holy Spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact any transformation you see that for me the spirit of the living God is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that God will like you he is what you call eternal life if you are not aware of that be aware eternal life is not what he brings his very presence is the life of God Jesus never became the Christ he was the son of the carpenter he could die that's why his parents ran away with him but when the spirit of god came he made him the christ so when the bible says in christ it's not just saying in jesus alone in jesus yes but together with the spirit of life look at what we have taught people about faith today Look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of Christ that we call faith. Right? We teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo. That's why it's not working. Let me tell you, faith is a product of an encounter. When the Bible says faith comes by hearing, do you hear what you read? Answer me. You see, we need to examine. It was, talk, it was a spiritual language. It was not even just talking about hearing with the ear. There is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings. And that's what produces true faith. 
because when the bible says hearing and hearing by the word at that time there was no books like this king james had not authorized this so what did they call the word the days that are coming will be fierce the days that are coming will be spiritual right now have you seen the way the world is going lately there is no embarrassment about spirituality again is that true everybody is opening up it used to be in secrecy before but right now there is an open confrontation it's like everybody is saying kai i'm not hiding it again i'm gay simple kill me if you will kill me up it's not today it has been like that another person is saying it's not only you two of us too another person is saying let me tell you i've not been a real christian this is my charm oh yeah you see everybody is confessing one by one one by one the meaning of that is darkness is about to reveal itself publicly right and it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim of it someone is building a house with blocks and cement when you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see the two course of blocks it will scatter everything what sort of wind is that is it now wind started how many hurricanes are on right now and scientists say they watch from space that before the hurricanes comes they see images of spirits doing things from the sea minutes later you see all the animals running they are still spiritual except human beings disaster hardly meets animals there they run away and leave us we are there trying to make money we are dead and we are dying like chickens this is a spiritual generation listen this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious to be spiritually minded the holy spirit is the advantage of this generation i am convinced that we are the generation that will return christ yes i am convinced the bible specifically talks about a number of things that as we call it that omega generation there are certain happenings that will characterize our generation hallelujah that we discern spiritual things let me give you an instance hold on let me explain something how many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of god and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of god do on stage right there are so many people who now challenge their pastors challenge everybody are you the only one who will preach are you the only one we have a democratic church that can vote out throw out pastors because of policies have you read in first samuel i can't remember i think maybe chapter 15 or 13 one time when saul is that true when samuel told saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly is that true he was coming to make a sacrifice they gathered the people it's in your bible and then saul told the, i mean samuel said he's coming at so and so time and he didn't come and they waited for him they waited for him they waited for him after they waited for him people were scattering and the ego of the king saul was was at stake and he said kai this guy is not coming let me what offer the bond offering as soon as he offered the bond offering samuel came and he said well uh I'm, I'm sorry honestly i was afraid it's not like i wanted i need to i didn't want to do it the people were disturbing me and since you were not around i thought since i was a king let me do it and samuel said you have done foolishly he said if you had allowed me to come god would have established your throne so it would have now be son of saul not son of david he said because you have done this the kingdom is taken to you for god has found another man after his heart just for violating the priesthood how many people violate the priesthood today and they don't care right all kinds of people any man can get up at any point 
lambast any man of God, write any article and speak and believe he will go scot-free. Go and read your Bible. It's because we have become carnally minded. We don't even know what it means to be a man of God. We think being a man of God is choosing the vocation of preaching. Right? So that when one walk or the other doesn't walk, or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative, you just say, talk. it's okay, at least you are preaching. You see, this is our mindset. So we, do not, we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar. There were times in the Bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things, they left it there. Have you read about Uzzah in the Bible? I'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards. The Bible says we do not discern the body of Christ. And many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate. Right? Remember that there was a time when the ark of God was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called Uzzah for his sincere love for God wanted to run and just block the ark. What happened to him? He died instantly. Have you read your Bible when Miriam and Aaron looked at their brother and said, Kai, see you, you are our younger brother. Don't open eye for us here. Is it only you that God will speak to? Huh? We were all born by right, this and that and Moses didn't say anything. What happened? A cloud came at once. Miriam became as white as snow. White as snow. Right? And Aaron, Aaron, it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him. We have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally. When they tell a man that God is able to do a miracle for you and that in, in, in five months, God can open you to fountains of blessings, you know, they look around and say, eh, I know. It's not like I'm saying God cannot do it, but you see, we have to calculate how A will become B and how C will become D. Look at how people try to run ministry today. Right? They try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways. Look at how people try to generate finances for ministry. When you see that, you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality. How did they build the tabernacle in the Old Testament? Because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness. How did the supply come? How did their clothes grow with them and their sandals? Today, if we were before the Red Sea, this is what Apostle Joshua Selma would have done. Engineers, where are you? The spirit of Bazalel. And then we start constructing a bridge. We're saying that if I'm a prophet, in five years we'll cross this Red Sea. See that? That's how it would have worked. That's how much we have reduced God. That's exactly what we would have done. And then the engineers come. And we say, okay, let's start doing everything. Let's start the architects come. Let's start. And then where are the kingdom financiers? And then prayer department. Where are? And then we keep praying. And God says, is that all to me? And then after five years, we say, now you will cross the bridge slowly. And while we are crossing, we'll be singing choruses. And when we reach there, I will put a, menu, a monument. Prophecy walked into motion by Apostle Joshua Selma. Shame on us. Because we call that the Old Testament. We laugh at them. We even say they are a shadow of us. Are you joking? Read Hebrews 11. There are men who in their humanity, we cannot even touch their shoes. Yet, that's the Old Testament. We are very quick to say it's old. We have done away with it. But we have not done one tenth of the things that they have done. It's in your Bible. People invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies. When was the last time you saw that? When was the last time you saw angels pursuing Boko Haram with hailstones? You are laughing. It's a serious thing. Look at bomb blasts happening on around. And there are men of God all around. And we claim we are anointed. They even put it on our posters when they invite us. Anointed man. Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Let me tell you. If this is what we think will bring Christ back, we are joking. 
how many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems look at look at jesus jesus inspires me these guys who were with the guy that was crippled they knew that if they could only see jesus that situation will be over is it not in your bible and they said let's tear this man's ceiling we will explain it to him afterwards today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves is that true and do a lot of carnal things there is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural or and 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 and, and that of unbelievers if i stand right now and i minister to sam and he falls under the anointing people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft where did we leave our spirituality is it not in your bible that jesus with the divine life walked through people on a cliff they were trying to kill him he walked through them like a spirit where is that generation i wanted to show us a video it's just that um we we, we didn't have it i didn't discuss with the media would have shown us that video um of patricia king right i know they don't have it they may not have it now otherwise you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven real oil physical oil you would have seen the foot of real angels that you are not pressing into god doesn't mean some other people are not the divine life we shout Zoe, we shout Zoe, but there is nothing Zoe about our lives. If they shoot me, I die. Zoe. Right? Every, ep every epidemic is in the society and it embraces me. Zoe. Now, I don't say this in a derogatory way. I'm saying this to challenge us. I guarantee you, if we learn how to receive that Zoe life, you will watch HIVs get healed as if they do not exist. It will no longer even be a prayer point. The more I see people line up for counseling, I don't rejoice to say, wow, it means I'm an anointed man. I look at people line up for counseling and I bleed in my heart because I say, shame on us. It means we are doing very small. A sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted they should now go out and begin to transform people but today we say wow i had a crowd hundreds of people to to mean that ministry is moving forward wrong parameters because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard who is god speaking to tonight where have you reduced god let me tell you one day maybe i'll come in the night i'll bring a chair here one coin on here We'll just sit down and we'll discuss. And I will share with you some of my encounters when God began to walk with me. Some of you, if I share it as you are seated now, you've seen me every day. You've even eaten with me, but you will not believe it. Because you say it's a lie. Encounters with angels. All kinds of spiritual encounters. Because I believe in him. I believe in him. I'll never forget the first time I had the audible voice of God. Let me tell you something. If you hear God, you must have faith. You see that? It's not about maybe I'm trying to calculate. You must have faith. Listen. At the, at the Mount of Transfiguration, when Elijah and Moses appeared, what did Peter do? Peter recognized them immediately. Had he ever seen them? Who told him? He said, what? I see three people. It's a privilege. That means I have questions to ask. Let's prepare three beds. One for Elijah, one for Moses because he thought they came to pass the night with Jesus and discuss a lot of things. When an angel appeared to Mary, Mary was not afraid. Mary was a natural occurrence. It was the salutation she was afraid of, not the angel. Today, if somebody says, I've seen an angel, I beg, Jerry, angel, where you think angels are just like that? Yet the Bible says, are they not ministering spirits? I'm showing you why we have become carnal. We threw away the Holy Spirit. We are gradually kicking the Holy Spirit out in a bid to do what we call word, 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 word. Right? Word, word, word. Just the word. Give it the word and, and don't give me anything else. There are even people who reject Jesus and say, just give me Bible. Give me Bible, Jesus, go. Once it's not Bible, even Jesus should go away. 
and the devil likes that theology if it is bible you want zondervan keep publishing new versions keep coming out and we keep carrying the bible and we convince ourselves that because we are holding bible and reading it we are growing in the world but we are becoming carnal that's why death is rampant it is that carnality do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us is that true witchcraft in the village is not a shock an average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft so if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear he will believe it but in the church ah if i disappear here now now in this place finally the article will be complete the article you have been writing you will pay new nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it confirm hey which is on suit yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up mighty army where is the army truly there is an army that is rising up but let me tell you our level of transformation is slow we are hardly becoming like the Christ there is, there is a standard that has been measured for us. And the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave. We must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up. The church calls spiritual growth prosperity. Since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard, we have left it and then remedied it with money. So when I come in with a nice suit and I come and say, am I, is the word not working? Let me tell you the truth. If that's what you think, you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of 100,000. Which, which pastor or which Christian can hardly do that in Nigeria? There are people lavishing resources. We have reduced ourselves and matched our spirituality. So if I come out with a jeep, if there are five jeeps that are lined up here, you say, man, God is in Koinonia. What? Five jeeps? He's here, oh. In Bible days, men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit. One man will threaten a nation, not a politician, but Elijah, not in a radio station. He made a declaration to the heavens. He vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said, me, I speak, there will not be rain. Not God revealed to me. I stand in my office over this territory and I said there will not be rain and he went to bed it was by sorcery Jezebel found out he was the one and she swore to remove his head how many men of God have disgraced themselves on television how many men of God have disgraced their ministries in newspapers how many men of God predicted that 2012 is his rapture Huh? How many? You see, we, we, we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years. Instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation, we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more. Today, people talk about the anointing, but they do not even know what the anointing is. No, at all. I tell you, many people do not even know what the anointing is. We have reduced God to prosperity because that's the only physical show of progress. Right? We have left the harder ones like healings and speakings over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross. Those ones are very intricate. You can't fake those ones. So we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones. We make money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working. It's not working though. We have to be, admit this thing and press into God. Part of my goals in life is to so align to the Holy Spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life i was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now right i think one of them is a miscarriage issue i'll minister to her shortly and then another person the question is if that happens in your church what will you tell them i know what you will tell them 
I know what you will tell them. You don't have faith. If you have faith, you will provoke my oil. There's no problem with my own end. It's you that don't, you are liars. We are must be a generation that can present Christ to the world in his fullness. I truly believe I will be part of those people with all my heart. I desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression. I have received the son and that means I believe that his life is in me but where is that life? We are only seeing fragments of it. Fragments of it. But there is a revival that is coming. This will be a revival of the spirit himself. When the spirit of God will start schooling people by ourselves. Because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us. The spirit of God in these days. The Lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week. I've been under an intense anointing. Right from when I finished the, the financial series. And the Holy Ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people. As many who are interested, there will be such a move of the spirit. I'm telling you, God will begin to tutor people. And the more you see him, the more you will know preachers are lying. The more you encounter him, the more, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars. The Lord is revealing this to me. This is how God trained me. God taught me so many things. Secrets in the Bible. There are times that I will... The Lord will be visiting me and his presence, physical cloud. I'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about. Real cloud, like a fog, will fill the room. And I'll lie down there and the pages of my Bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures. I hope you believe it. Hallelujah. We have reduced God. We have reduced God. It's, this is too bad. To an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up, people look and they say, Kai, who knows him? Look at how you put pressure on men of God. People come for miracle service. We have to be asking them, where are you coming from? So that you don't think that they organize things around. It's a shame. It's a shame. It says, he that has a son has life has life look at what jesus did an example of what we should become jesus five loaves and two fish he multiplied it everywhere he went he was doing good everywhere we go we are doing bad or at least average and yet we claim to have his spirit there are people who even brag and say i have the spirit of jesus without measure where is it where, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure? There is no sincerity in our pursuit of God. We tell a lot of lies. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday. And I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie. I can fake it now and say there's somebody here. You have a stomach ache and somebody will arise. And because I did not minister in truth, my lie will... Do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you? How many people don't pray? They come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense. I am a prayer warrior. But there is a, there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer. It follows their teachings. It's like a spirit. It's like a finishing on your words. If you are a man of the altar, it truly, that fire, it's not just the shouting. There is a communication of life. How many people claim they are prayer warriors? And they stand and speak and while they are speaking you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically because there is no life that is coming the question God is asking you is why did you stop believing in me many of us did not start like this God is speaking to us many of us when we started we were spiritual we meant business with God eventually as we started getting some results in our lives we have thrown the holy spirit out now we are left with letters convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures it means we are growing spiritually do you not see the need in our world today 
there are people with hiv cancer there are people in need of the zoe life that we claim to have we claim to have zoe i am an ambassador of the kingdom then demonstrate it he said when i came to you i did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech because i know the danger that it can do to you but when i came i came in a demonstration i came to prove to you i came to bring the jesus of your bible to be made manifest here and now ah, this is the theme of my life that everywhere i go i become an expression of his reality that no matter how you do not believe in god when i show up you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the christ right now demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshiping they are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out when we finish we say kai it was a wonderful service together let's share the grace and they join us and share the grace demons mock men of god all around and we give all kinds of explanations for it do you not see what is happening to the body of christ but the holy ghost revealed this to me that in the seasons that are coming personally he's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials where in a sleep you will see a strange man come to you and begin to tell you right i want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power and when you wake up in the morning like like solomon and intelligence you cannot account for all of a sudden this is how this is how god trained me oh this is how god trained me i remember a time in my life when i would sleep in the night this happened for almost two months and at least one of god's generals will come to me in dreams explaining to me their perspectives i remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives i remember a man called peter tan the first time i would meet that man was in a vision the first time i ever saw apostle paul it was in a vision i didn't even know he was the one i just saw a man who was short and bald headed after speaking to me then i asked who are you and he didn't respond to me he moved a while and then he turned and said paul the first time i would see the picture on the internet i said this is the man i saw yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the name koinonia was a revelation it's not that i just sat down and said kai what should we call it now no no right now everything we do is sensual and carnal the exact blueprint and the things that we're doing in this ministry were a revelation a revelation by god it was the spirit of god that revealed to me the secret of church growth now i'm not saying i'm throwing away materials and all of that it's good i've, I've, I've taught us to build ourselves but I'm saying, Koinonia, hear me. If we throw away the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Let me have somebody here, just one person, anybody. You're a visitor, you're a pastor. Don't worry. You came all the way. Or oh, you served in Jigawa and you are here right now. Your face is new. The Lord will use you greatly. I know you came with a hunger from your heart. I will use you as an example and may that example be your experience. Huh? Hallelujah. Watch this. This is how God designed us to walk. Never separated from the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for women, look for it with him. If he approves it, then he's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are talking about ladies, let it be with his presence. If you are eating, let it be with him. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not a person you leave. And then when you come for koinonia, oh, sweet Holy Spirit, I, I love you. And, and all those things you say, I, I love you. You are my all in all. You are, you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring. The Holy Spirit was sent literally, literally to continue the ministry of Jesus. If you want to know everything the Holy Spirit should do in your life, study Jesus in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit is all that and more. All that 
and more. There was a time I said, Holy Spirit, now you have to, what am I supposed to expect in your ministry? And he told me, he said, study Jesus. That's what he told me. Everything you ever see Jesus do to the disciples, expect the Holy Spirit to do to you, including revealing himself. There was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said, who do men say I am? One day the Holy Ghost will ask you, who do men say I am? Say, yeah, you are the spirit of this. You are the... And then he says, who do you call me? And he said, I don't know you. And he says, now write, my name is the spirit of life. And to you, that becomes a revelation. At once, you begin to minister life because his words bring impartations. When was the last time you heard the voice of God? Not the one you are lying about, the real voice of God. When was the last time the presence of God came into your room in worship? Let me show you where we have thrown him away. When was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement, you don't know retreat. Unfortunately in the kingdom, you must retreat to advance. That you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple, your temple now, not a building, is filled with his glory. And songs begin to come. Look at what musicians write. Nonsense. They, they write songs that don't bless anybody. They just come up with songs. The reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people who are activating multiple streams of income. When was the last time you stood in his presence? And you began to worship until your worship became a song. And you touched a depth in the spirit that resonated in your spirit. When was the last time you went to minister, man of God? And you stood in that meeting and when you finished, people were shaking. They could not explain what happened. They knew that something heavenly, like the dew of the morning came upon them. They may not even remember what you thought. But they knew they carried the spirit. When was the last time? Because of your teaching, someone just turned and said, Lord, I will seek you. And lock yourself three days. Do that today in our generation. And people say you are over spiritualizing things. So God is not like that. This guy came all the way from where? From, from Jigawa State. To come for a meeting because there is a hunger. It's not a conference, it's not a convention, but hunger brought him. Right? God must show us something in this generation. Otherwise, these games that we are playing will end up frustrating us. God must show us something. That's my cry as a man of God. I cry to God and I say, Lord, I don't want to do the ordinary. There is something you've got to show me. That's why I love my secret place. Those who are close to me know that my life is like a herbalist. My life is like a herbalist. You don't see me roaming around the street eating granite and moving. I say, ah, it's a joyful day. No, I'm on a pursuit. I'm on a serious pursuit. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face because my relevance is tied to his face. My relevance is tied to his glory my ability to translate the realities in christ let me tell you something my my goal i've seen it in visions but they have not happened i saw one time in a vision let me share with you one vision that i had one time i i say it jokingly but truly truly i had a vision and a ghastly motor accident happened ghastly motor accident as it was happening it's like i was caught up from somewhere a physical location with my body and all of a sudden I appeared there and it was just like a shadow like this just passed through those dead bodies and including the car there was a sound like the car the way it hit, the impact it came back as though nothing had happened ah, may God bring us to those days may God bring us to those days may God bring us to those days A day when you speak to the earth to fight Boko Haram and let the military rest. 
you invoke the power of creation the soul of the earth and you find is it not in your bible where you see that many things happen to people flies came from everywhere to disturb the nation of israel because god wanted his people to go this bow and arrow we're using can only go so far we are desperately in need of a spiritual generation ak-47 can only do his best but let me tell you ak-47 is limited because Boko Haram and all the people, they know that it is now a spiritual affair. Traditional hunters in Meduguri have dared the military to leave them because they say they understand how to invoke the powers. You see that? The whole world is already crying for a supernatural dimension. That dimension is coming. Even if you are not interested, there are people who have pledged their lives to contend in the spirit for you to do that you must give up this mindset of trying to build a career in ministry because you have to be a fool to get to that kind of dimension but how many people are that willing bless you how many people are that willing how many people are that willing to see the power of god transformation and renewal is the key to making the realities in christ to become a reality in your life right now i made up my mind that everywhere i go to preach i don't like people turning to me and say man of god your message was powerful powerful in what i want to see how much the gates of hell was shut down as a result of that i want to see how revival stepped into a city as a result of my coming not just that a great man of god visited a place that's not enough God is looking for revivalists. God is looking for mighty men and women that he will do great business with. And I've made myself available, God knows, with my entire life. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountain of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, spirit of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Sing, oh sing, oh sing, you are mighty on your own. Break forth the spirit of the deep and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Lord, this is a cry from a generation that is desperate to see your power and your glory. We are tired of church and religion. We want to see the kingdom come. We want to see his power revealed. The reality of the Zoe life, the divine life, the incorruptible seed of the word of God. We want to become epistles of power. 
break forth, oh spirit of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, seek, you ancient Zion's king, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Say, you are mighty on your throne. 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 Choose to reduce your power. We step up the standard. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You are 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 mighty.
enough of nominal Christianity enough of powerless Christianity enough of faking it in the name of faith there is a substance and this life is in his son the soul life the divine life the energy the ability of the spirit the spirit of the Lord that will bring awakening signs and wonders miracles and breakthrough cry out Kados you are mighty on your throne we sing you ancient Zion steam cry out Kados you are mighty on your throne. Break forth the spirit of the deep. Cry out in our midst, O oh God. Let the spirit of adoption cry, Abba Father. Abba Father. Let that cry of revival, of a ministry of power ministry of the spirit that can change lives we will not deviate from the part of the apostles we will not deviate from the part of the prophets we will not deviate from the part of spiritual progress we will not deviate we refuse to bend we refuse to conform to the powerless dissertations of men. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Say, you are mighty on your throne. I have received the 
son Lord let the life let the realities in Christ be manifest let the realities in Christ be manifest I'm tired of a powerless ministry walk conscious from today if you have received the son I want you to know that there is a life in you crying for expression there is a divine life that can heal the sick there is a divine life that can cast out devils there is a divine life that can change hopeless situations there is a divine life that can bring God to the sea. Stop preaching powerless sermons. Stop teaching just theology without grace. Stop exciting the people of God with no results in their lives. your voice and pray one minute I am determined to be supernatural in every way in every way no the sons of God are not natural people they are supernatural in every way pray my hands are supernatural my words are supernatural lift your voice and pray My utterances are supernatural. They carry the life-giving power, the sway life. The power to heal, the power to alter the destinies of people, the power to transform their lives. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty in my life. 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 Say, you are mighty in my life. 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 You are 
are mighty in my life. One more time. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that from today dead religion will die out of your life I pray for you that the substance of spiritual reality that which authenticates the manifestation of the Zoe life that which proves here and now that you are not natural that which proves that the earthly, the terrestrial has become celestial and heavenly. I pray in the name of Jesus that may that life begin to manifest through your life. That your hands will become instruments of revival and signs and wonders. That when men need God to show up, they will call on your attention because you will be the clearest representation of the divine life in your territory. I pray for you, may your words carry the power from heaven. May your words no longer be barren and powerless. May your words authenticate the fact that the spirit of life is at work in you. May they bring healing. May the words bring grace. May they bring life. Like the river in Ezekiel 47 that everywhere it flows let the fish that was dead come back to life let the souls that are dead come back to life i pray that from today your life and your ministry will no longer just be a ministration of death wasting the time of god's people may you step into an unusual dimension i'd like you to receive what i'm releasing upon you is a ministration of the spirit many of you will go back to your meetings from today and you will begin to see cripples walk you will begin to see the demonstration not just in talk 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 with no results there are many of you that will go back to your homes and the moment you step in there all of a sudden your territory begins to react because the Zoe life not just that which is in christ alone that which has been manifest right here right now right here right now right here right now you will go back to your territories many of you will pass people and you will hear spirits scream out of them you didn't plan to pray for them but you took the presence of god you took the life of heaven so where the life that controls heaven so way the life that upholds all things i'm praying for you that everything that has defied god in your life in the name that is above all names may that so way life come upon it right now may that so way life Come upon every sick body here right now. May that life of God. Let it come upon every dying spiritual life. Every lukewarm spiritual life. The life that makes men doubt whether God is working with you or not. I pray for you. Let it change from tonight. You don't have to tell people you're a man of God. Carry that life. Carry that divine life. May that life hold sickness from your body permanently. This repeated stamina circle of nonsense that comes upon your body. Discern the Lord's body so that you will be strong. Discern the Lord's body. Father, I pray, let there be mighty men and women that will arise from this meeting tonight. Let tonight's meeting produce a spiritual awakening. 
and i stretch my hands and i pray for you whatever you came here with in the name that is above all names that is not consistent with the zoe life whatever it is that is not consistent with the life of heaven right now i declare in the name of jesus that it leaves your body and your life now i cause every pain i cause every situation that is attempting to challenge god in your life in the name of jesus christ may the lord put a testimony in your mouth that will verify before men that you are a carrier of his presence father we give you all the praise listen walk out of this meeting not just with an excitement but with a consciousness that you are not only a carrier but a dispenser the bible says the first adam was made a quickening soul a quickening soul can only benefit but cannot dispense but the second adam was made a life giving spirit a life giving spirit next time someone is sick around you don't just turn and say bring him to joshua sermon or bring him to this tell him in the name of jesus i agree with you you have been doing it as an ordinary christian that's why it's not working you have just been doing it and say after all i'm a brother do it now as one who is together with the holy spirit always realize that it's not about you it's about the paracletos always realize you are going to preach don't just go alone i'm going to go and minister you'll be disappointed go with him when you stand on that stage even if you do not know what to say realize that there is one the spirit of life as you stand to sing and minister realize that you are not just talking songs or melodies but you are ministering life and you will be amazed to see people change don't be afraid of confronting situations with God without God there are many things that are not possible hallelujah I want to pray for people here right now keep standing everyone I want to pray for people right now you had this fiery message tonight on the life of God there are people who have not received the Son of God you have heard about Jesus you may have even preached about him he has been offered to you many times but you have not received him hallelujah there are others who have given their lives to Christ but sincerely you know that the name of what you are doing right now based on the standard of God you have missed out on the track of spiritual progress and you need to make your way those two categories of people I don't care if you have been a preacher for 30 years you need to make your way right you say Lord this thing I've been doing is not Christianity I'm, 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 I'm tired of playing games right now inside and outside please make your way quickly and come to the front I want to pray for you I want to pray for you don't sit back don't wait for someone to come before you God bless you find your way to the front there are many people outside don't sit back make your way to the front God bless you. Koinonia, keep celebrating them as they come. Your life must change. Don't worry. Leave her alone. Hallelujah. Tonight will mark a turning point and a defining moment in the life of many people. Hallelujah. Please draw, draw close as I lead you to pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Um, I understand there's a woman who, there are, there are two people I'm supposed to minister to, but I'll minister to one right now. There is a woman who has been having issues of miscarriage. This is not word of knowledge. I, I'm aware that the woman is supposed to be here. I don't know if she came, if she's around. Is, is that person around or that family you are the one 
not just word of knowledge you, you came uh, is this your first time up in here come you're the one with that situation from where did you come Mina. Mina. how long has it been four times four times you get pregnant you lose the baby you get pregnant you lose the baby we are glad to announce to you that this is where it stops I guarantee, listen, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, God did not bring you here to waste your time. There is always a spirit behind it. Four times is not mistake. Four times is no longer biology. Four children, four destinies, four lives thrown away by the assault of darkness. Now imagine if this was your church and a woman comes like this to come and meet the great man of God. Then you talk grammar and by the time you finish explanation the bible never said creation is waiting for the explanation of the sons of god it says creation is waiting for the manifestation madam i assure you that not only will god set you free but there will be restoration in your life you believe that lay your hands on your stomach and let's pray it brings joy we represent the government of heaven Lay your hands. That devil of darkness. Your time is over in this woman's life. Right now. You are a wicked spirit of darkness. And you must leave. Right now. Go. Out of her. By the power of the Holy Spirit. There is an anointing coming upon you. For you to be free of this nonsense. That the devil has planted in your stomach. I feel heat leaving my hands to you. That wicked spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you are free of this demonic influence. Not only will you give birth, you will go and take in immediately and your child will stay. You will have as many children as you want in the name of Jesus Christ. This thing is not happening to you alone. Huh? This, is, this is a trend in your family. This is because I'm praying for you and I see a spirit. Huh? I'm seeing a trend. It's something that keeps happening. People miscarry and people have all kinds of things. And so it's not like it's something bad you did as a person. Are you getting my point now? But Jesus Christ sets you free. Where's your husband? He's in Mina too. Go and tell him that not only will the Lord um, bring a child to your family, God will turn around your entire lives because you are here. You believe that? Father, in the name of Jesus, confirm your word. Like Eli, I speak to you like you spoke to Anna. Go and come back with your child. It's done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Those of you coming, uh, I want you to lift your hands. Please, you are not reciting a poem young and old mean it serious with jesus see the trouble is when people come out like this they suddenly remember that they were emotional and they came out and then they are embarrassed and then they are ashamed this is serious business hallelujah say after me from the depth of your heart say lord jesus i believe in you some of you as you are praying the power of god will come upon you strongly because the gospel is the power of God. Right? To them that believe. I receive your life. I receive eternal life. Into my spirit. I declare. That from tonight. I'm no longer natural. I'm no longer ordinary. The power. That raised Christ from the dead. Is within me. I declare that habits addictions and every life that is not consistent with that of the kingdom has no power over me right now the holy spirit the very spirit of god the life of god is at work in me i declare that i go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus keep those hands lifted please father in the name of jesus i pray I commend these ones to you spirit of the living God you are the life-giving spirit of God 
I pray that tonight in a very supernatural way, you will come upon their lives and you will make them ambassadors of the kingdom. Right now in the name of Jesus, may that life and that power, may that fire, that all surpassing life of the spirit come upon you. Breaking every chain and every limitation that comes with the old man. In the name of Jesus, I set you free to... Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.